Even though Starship V3 hasn't flown a single mission yet, Elon Musk has already dropped a major hint about Starship V04. On X platform, he said, Starship version 4 will be another 10 to 20% longer. That one line instantly sparked a wave of excitement because this upgrade isn't just about making the rocket bigger. It's about solving the problem that matters most, getting humans to the surface of Mars, something we've never done before. So, what does stretching the ship actually change when it comes to a Mars mission? And more importantly, when will Starship V4 actually arrive? Let's break it down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In today's world of tech giants, companies like Apple, Google, and Samsung all share one quiet rule for staying on top. They never stop at the current version. Take Apple, for example. The moment the iPhone 17 hits the market and starts dominating sales, Apple's engineers are already deep into work on the iPhone 18. Different teams running in parallel, all to make sure innovation never pauses. That's how they shape the future and protect their lead. And nowhere is this mindset more visible than at Elon Musk's SpaceX. Even though Falcon 9 remains the company's reliable workhorse, launching thousands of satellites into orbit every single year, SpaceX has never been satisfied with just that. Instead, they poured their energy into Starship, a gigantic spacecraft designed to take humanity back to the moon and, ultimately, to Mars. Now, as we step into 2026, we're officially entering the era of Starship version 3, a taller vehicle powered by Raptor 3 engines with a dramatically higher payload capacity. But here's the thing. Before we've even seen the first real flight of Starship 5-3, SpaceX engineers are already hard at work on version 4, an even bolder design. And according to Elon Musk himself, Starship V-4 could be up to 20% longer than V-3. To be more specific, when Starship V-3 is fully stacked, both stages together, it stands at about 124.4 meters tall. With version 4, that total height jumps to around 142 meters, which means the actual increase is closer to 14%. So, why does this difference exist? To understand that, we first need to look at ship VI-4 itself, the part of the vehicle specifically upgraded for Mars missions. Once completed, the ship alone will stand about 61 meters tall, nearly 9 meters taller than V-3. To put that into perspective, the ship by itself will be roughly as tall as ULA's Vulcan Centaur when fully stacked. And remember, Vulcan is officially classified as a heavy lift rocket. And this is exactly why SpaceX keeps pushing to make Starship bigger. It's all about Mars. Because to actually reach Mars, you need a huge amount of fuel. That's the key point here. By stretching the ship by nearly 9 extra meters, SpaceX can extend the internal propellant tanks as well. As a result, Starship VZ-4 is expected to carry up to 2,300 tons of propellant. And as you know, Mars is far. Even at its closest approach, it's about 54.6 million kilometers, or roughly 33.9 million miles, from Earth. During the cruise phase, the Raptor engines don't need to run continuously. In space, there's no air drag, so the engines are only fired briefly to fine-tune the trajectory, slow down for Mars orbit insertion, and finally for landing. Technically speaking, the 1,600 tons of propellant on Starship V3 is already enough. The total delta V for a one-way trip from LEO is only around 4 to 6 kilometers per second. But there's a catch. At that delta V, the journey would take 6 to 8 months. And that's a serious problem. That much time in deep space means prolonged exposure to cosmic radiation, increasing cancer risk, almost like being exposed to repeated X-ray scans day after day. The longer the trip, the more food and water you burn through. And let's be clear, Starship is not the ISS. It doesn't have the same level of life support, redundancy, or comfort. This is where Starship V4's extra propellant really matters. With more fuel, the vehicle can perform a much harder burn when leaving LEO, pushing the Delta V up to around 7 to 9 kilometers per second, or even higher. That alone could cut the travel time down to just 3 to 6 months. And that's exactly why SpaceX is equipping Ship V-4 with nine Raptor 3 engines, three sea-level engines, and six vacuum engines, generating an initial thrust of around 2,700 tons. More fuel, more thrust, more Delta V. Less time exposed to space. And that's only the Mars transfer part of the story. 
Before any of that can happen, the vehicle still has to go through orbital refueling because those nine Raptor engines will burn a massive amount of propellant just to escape Earth's gravity in the first place. With Starship V4, applying this same stretch configuration to tanker Starships changes the equation entirely. Instead of a long chain of refueling launches, no more than five tanker flights would be enough to fully load a Starship depot. Once the Mars-bound Starship reaches orbit, it docks with the depot, and in just one to two hours, it can take on the full 2,300 tons of propellant. Then it's ready to head straight for Mars. Fewer tanker flights, shorter refueling time, lower risk, and in the end, a much higher chance of mission success. That's the real reason Elon Musk wants to make Starship bigger. But making Starship longer also means adding a lot more mass. So the obvious question is, does that put extra stress on Super Heavy during liftoff? The answer is no, because in version 4, it's not just the ship that gets stretched, the booster grows too. Super Heavy V4 is expected to stand about 81 meters tall, roughly the height of a 20-story building. That extra height allows it to carry up to 4,050 tons of propellant, more than 400 tons extra compared to version 3, the version we're about to see fly for the first time on Flight 12. There's still no official word on the exact engine count, but chances are SpaceX will stick with 33 Raptor 3 engines, or possibly even 35. Based on published figures, the booster could generate around 10,000 tons of liftoff thrust, roughly three times more powerful than Saturn V. At that point, the fully fueled ship would weigh about 2,500 tons. Add the mass of the booster itself, and the entire full stack comes in at roughly 6,700 tons. That gives Starship a thrust-to-weight ratio of about 1.49, meaning thrust exceeds gravity by nearly 49%. And that number matters a lot. The thrust-to-weight ratio, or TWR, is what decides whether a rocket can even leave the ground in the first place, and just as importantly, how it climbs once it does. If the TWR is below 1, the rocket simply can't lift off. At exactly 1, it barely holds itself up. But once you go above 1, that's when real flight begins. With Starship V4 sitting at around 1.5, the difference is huge. From the very first second of ignition, thrust outweighs gravity by nearly 50%, allowing the vehicle to rise off the pad aggressively and cleanly without hesitation. That strong initial acceleration means the upper stage can reach orbit more efficiently, burn less propellant overall, and ultimately cut down the number of tanker flights required. So in the end, making Starship bigger isn't a drawback at all. It's actually one of the most important optimizations SpaceX is making, with only one destination in mind, Mars. And here's the really interesting part. We may not have to wait that long to see the first Starship V4 hardware appear. Elon Musk has already hinted at the timeline, saying, Starship version 4 will have 42 engines when three more Raptors are added to a significantly longer ship. That will fly in 2027. If that turns out to be accurate, then SpaceX is actually keeping a surprisingly steady pace. V1 in 2023 to 2024, V2 in 2025, V3 in 2026, and V4 in 2027. It almost sounds like Apple's iPhone cycle, one new version every year. Except here, we're not talking about a $1,000 smartphone. We're talking about the largest rocket system ever built. Just the cost of producing one Super Heavy and a full Starship stack is estimated at somewhere between 90 and $150 million. And the biggest chunk of that cost comes from the Raptor engines, by far the most complex and technologically demanding components in the entire system. On top of that, you've got infrastructure, facilities, and massive payroll expenses. Right now, a single Raptor engine is estimated to cost anywhere from $200,000 to about $1 million. With recent leaks suggesting it may already be below $500,000 thanks to continuous improvements like Raptor 3. For Starship V3, Super Heavy uses 33 engines, while the ship itself uses 6, meaning engine costs alone, can reach 8 to nearly $40 million per stack, roughly 30 to 40% of total production cost. That may sound expensive, but it's still insanely cheap compared to traditional engines like NASA's RS-25, which costs around $100 million per engine. And in the long run, it's only going to get cheaper. 
In a recent tweet, Musk mentioned that once Gigabay, the massive new facility being built next to the Megabase, comes online, SpaceX could reach truly insane production volumes, maybe as high as 10,000 ships per year. Of course, that's just theoretical for now, because yeah, building 10,000 starships a year would raise one very simple question. Where would the money even come from? And the answer is obvious. Starship won't be mass produced at that scale until it actually creates real value for humanity, or more realistically, until it makes a lot of money for SpaceX. Over the next three years, SpaceX will almost certainly start scaling back Falcon 9 launches and shift more Starlink missions over to Starship. And that makes perfect sense. Starship isn't just about the Moon and Mars. Those are long-term, expensive goals. In the near term, its real job is launching satellites. Falcon 9 currently costs about $67 million per launch. Starship, on the other hand, is expected to be six to ten times cheaper. Elon Musk has even floated the idea of pushing launch costs below $10 million, or, in the long run, as low as two to three million dollars. At that point, most of the cost is basically just fuel because Starship is designed to be fully reusable. On top of that, Starship can carry far more payload than Falcon 9, potentially 60 to 90 Starlink satellites in a single launch. Every flight like that could save SpaceX tens of millions of dollars. Multiply that over hundreds of launches, and the business case becomes very clear. So, what comes next? Can Starship actually make money from Moon or Mars missions? Absolutely. In the future, SpaceX could secure multi-billion dollar contracts from governments or private companies, transporting scientific equipment, building lunar bases, or even supporting resource extraction, like helium-3. Some economic analyses suggest entirely new space markets worth hundreds of billions of dollars could emerge within the next decade. From a logical standpoint, the moon becomes the economic stepping stone, a place where SpaceX can rent out space infrastructure, orbital fuel depots, lunar refueling stations, not just for Starship, but for other spacecraft as well.